My name is Ian Clement and this is another video in the CISQ 101 series uh, with regards to support or hangers based on CISQ 9.1 and in this video we'll be looking at the automated placing of hangers. Uh, the original video we basically looked at is just manual placement of hangers. Uh, this case we're going to make use of supports uh, which again just to confirm is off the CISQ ribbon support which basically brings up this. Uh, again, I'm using pipe as the example. Uh, it does work exactly the same for duct or conduit or cable tray. So we do provide some example uh, configurations here. I actually want to go through and build a different one. So to build a new configuration, it's the plus. We tell it the type or discipline. So it's going to be for pipe. I'm going to give it a name. So I'm going to call this example one. Uh, again, any name that doesn't already exist, and then add and put that down there. Now, make sure you hit the small arrow here so you can see it expands out there. There's nothing in this one yet. But by doing this, it means when I go to add hangers down here in the bottom right, Cisco knows which configuration I'm actually talking about here. So again, back to the library, Imperial. And again, I'm just going to pick some basic hangers here and use these Cooper B lines. Just for ease of use there. And I'm going to start off with um, the example system I've got drawn there has some uh, small ball pipe and some large ball pipe. What I want to use is maybe the J hanger on the small ball. So I'm basically going to drag this J hanger. And because this one's already open, I can put it anywhere on this left hand panel. And Cisco knows it's part of example one because that's one I've actually opened. So it's loading it off the website at the moment. And once that's completed, it says, okay, what do we do with this? Now, this list is just the sizes of that hanger that the manufacturer has available. So obviously this goes from half up to 10 inch. Um, if I try and use this on 12 inch pipe, it won't work because there isn't a 12 inch hanger. Uh, again, it's going to take me through what I need to do. So obviously the name of the system, the name of the hanger, the support discipline, as I mentioned earlier, is something if you do fill these in, uh, it does group them together on the uh, tablet. Um, I, you can also group them together on schedules and things. Uh, I'm going to leave mine blank again. It is optional. Uh, but the diameter is up to and including what size pipe should we use this on. So I basically want to use it on my copper. And I'm going to say my copper is going to top out at two inches. So two inches and smaller pipe is what this standard is going to apply to. And I'm going to say I want them spaced on a full straight run of uh, pipe, let's say every six feet. This is a feet one. Now you've got two options here, which you can use either or both or neither. Uh, I'm gonna say, I do wanna support the fittings, like for, an, for example, an elbow or bend. I wanna make sure that there is actual hanger within let's say one foot of every fitting. Uh, now the coupling one, I'm gonna leave unselected. So it's gonna ignore couplings. Uh, couplings may be used, for example, if you're doing a no hub system, uh, where you need couplings either side of the hubs um, in that case, I'd be basically using this, uh, turn this one on and have it one foot and probably turn this off completely. Uh, not keeping on the fitting, just basically keeping it with the hubs. But so you can use a combination of these. Distance of edge of beam. Uh, when Cisco places a hanger, uh, you can tell it to look for structure above it. Um, now, what this one does is if it does find a structural beam, rather than placing the hanger exactly six feet or one foot from a fitting on there, if the rod would connect to a beam, it will automatically move the rod to the closest edge of the beam plus whatever I put in here. So I'm going to put in 0 0.75 inches, essentially for a beam clamp. You know, and I, I'm working on the assumption that my beam clamps are going to push any rod uh, three quarters of an inch off the edge of a beam. Uh, if you leave this blank, um, it basically would end up putting a rod exactly, let's say the six foot spacing, which could end up being in the center of a beam. And therefore you'd need to drill a hole or whatever off there. Obviously in most cases you do use the uh, offset. Uh, rod diameter, I'm gonna say I just need three eighths. Uh, it is a decimal input and enter these as zero points. Uh, if you just start with a point, you'll discover it doesn't work. It needs to be zero point. Again, my alternate names, I'm going to leave these blank. I, I could use these schedules, but I don't want to use the Cooper B line, Fig, B3690, etc. Um, maybe look at that later. Default rod length. 
what well, this has got to be filled in at the bottom here this is basically what happens if there is no structure so there's nothing for it to connect to so i'm going to say make these five foot and you do need to choose a color i like to highlight mine in pink these are essentially rods or hangers that cannot be installed uh, maybe I've gone outside the building. Maybe there's no architecture above me. Um, I need to review any of these hangers, which is why I make them quite large and make them bright, brightly coloured. Um, if I don't and just send this out to the robot, um, the robot guy is going to be calling me to say that the hangers don't work. You know, there's nothing to connect them to. So basically, once I've got this filled in, hit the save and it moves it over here. So that's dealing with pipe up to and including two inches. So I'm going to close out of here, and now I'm going to use maybe my clevis hanger, drag that one across, and again, example one's open, so anywhere on this side, loads it in, pulls it off the website. Again, same scenario, same sizes, etc., or different sizes in this case. So I'm going to say if the pipe is bigger than two, but less than, let's say, 12 inches, I want to have a spacing now of, let's say, eight feet. And again, I do want hangers beside the uh, fittings. Um, I don't worry about the couplings. 0 0.75 in my example to move it off the edge of any any structural steel it hits. Uh, I'm now going to go with let's say half inch rods. Uh, I'm not going to bother with the alternate descriptions. Default length if you can't find structure. Make it five feet and make it pink. Hit the OK. Hit save. So I put it on here. Now you can keep building these up. I'm not going to go any further than this. Uh, but basically you can add in as many size breaks as you want to. It may be the same hanger, but as the pipe gets larger, you have to change the spacing. So you can reuse the same hanger or you can have different hangers. So once I've got this thing built, if I X out of here, you'll see now I've got this one. And when I do expand it, you do get to see just a, a basic summary of what it's going to do. So it doesn't go into any detail at this point, but it gives you a basic summary. So now I'm actually going to apply that. Uh, again, uh, if you watch the first video, uh, placement options is still applying whenever I've actually left that on. The same as for individual hangers. This also applies for the automated hangers as well. So I've got mine set still to uh, look to attach, attach to structure that's actually in the model. And in my model, I've got a slab that's basically covering this area over here somewhere. So again, if I want to place the hangers now, Tab all the way through, just select all the pipe system you want. Make sure this is expanded, whichever one you want to apply. Place hangers. So you can see that, it's working its way through. And you can see here, there's my pink hangers. These are the ones it couldn't find any structure to attach to. Everything under the slab is actually connected to the slab. Now you will notice, let me look at that in the plan view there, it's literally following the rules we gave it. So on the um, the larger pipe, it is every eight feet, but also one foot away from a fitting. So from here to here is eight feet, and it's actually giving me an extra one here, which is one foot on the fitting. So it is following the rules. Um, I can just decide, well, yeah, I don't want that one. So I'll just grab that one. You can delete them. You can move them. So typically you will need to review after it's finished, obviously that's that wouldn't work there anyway. So typically you will end up generally just deleting them, but you can copy them. You can manually add some additional hangers if need be. Uh, you can see there it's upsized when I've gone over the installation for me, or nicely, automatically. Uh, give me that. But that basically is method, or the automated method. Obviously on the smaller pipe, I'm actually getting the, uh, the, the B3690. On the larger pipe, I'm getting the uh, clevis, the 3100. So again, it's just following the rules coming through there. And like I say, uh, any, any in my case, any pink hangers, I do need to come back and review. Um, now, just want to quickly look at a rack process. Now, if I want to put aut automate the place and hangers on racks, if I select them all, and I'm going to use this as un our, our units, for example, just basically give me a units for every 10 feet. If I select all the pipes, the problem you run into there, it will treat each pipe separately. So I end up with one unistrut hanger here, 
another one on this pipe, another one on this pipe. So I'll end with three little tiny unistrut hangers. I don't want that. I want one unistrut spanning all of them. So, method to do that, select a pipe. So in my case, I generally try and pick a pipe that's sort of vaguely in the middle. It doesn't matter, but I think you'll find it makes life a little easier if you pick something roughly in the middle. So I've highlighted the pipe system, Exp extend the one I want to use, in my case the Unistrut one, and place hangers. So again, goes through, places all these hangers, but it's only addressing the single pipe, because I only want one hanger. So now I've got all these hangers in place here, what I can do next is reselect this, use my filter, use my filter. Now all hangers, doesn't matter whether it's for pipe, duct or electrical, uh, they're all pipe accessories. So I just want to make sure I've got the pipe accessories selected, or in my case the hangers. Yeah, okay off that. So that's basically bringing me up with the hanger properties here. And if we zoom back in again, so you can see what we're actually doing, all these hangers are selected. Uh, you have this uh, right length and left length. That extends the width of the hanger to the left or the right. Um, it, there is no indication of which and left and right. Um, to be honest, it is just an experimentation. So I'm going to start with the right. I'm just going to put one foot on there. So that's, that, that's the right in, in this scenario. You will find that will vary based on which way you tend to put the hangers in there. Not quite enough. So let me push that up to uh, 18 inches or 1.5 feet. I'm going to call that one good. And then to the left, let's put that in as the one foot. So essentially that's giving me a rack of hangers there. And again, you'll notice they're all in pink. Uh, uh, sorry, wrong ones. We're going to the right ones. They're all in uh, highlighted because they haven't actually connected up to the structure again, or green in this case, actually. Uh, this one must be actually set to be green rather than pink. If we edit that, just to take a quick confirmation. So yeah, that's actually set up to be green as opposed to my pink. Which says it is designated that these are not connected to structure. And so if, this is essentially the results you get off that. So that is the automated placing of hangers.